I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from Italy. Pope Francis made a 10 hour visit to Naples this past weekend. It was a very busy visit, which included a brief stop for prayer at the shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary in Pompeii, a visit to a notoriously rough neighborhood, meetings with priests and religious, visiting with the sick, young people and elderly, a mass in the center of town, and lunch with about 100 inmates at a local prison. Rome Reports was at the prison for this enthusiastic visit. Pope Francis had lunch with inmates at the Poggio Reale prison in Naples. Approximately 90 prisoners warmly welcomed him with applause. <laughs> Earlier in the yard, the Pope blessed this St. Francis of Assisi figure and greeted other prisoners. In the dining room, he thanked the inmates for joining him for lunch, and they responded with another round of applause and chants. The menu consisted of pasta and chicken. After eating, the Pope took questions from some of the attendees. Pope Francis told them that God does not forget his children and that prison bars cannot separate them from his love. He also denounced the, quote, inhumane conditions in many prisons throughout the world. During the Pope's meeting with priests, seminarians, and religious in the Cathedral of Naples, the Pope blessed the congregation with the reliquary holding a vial of dried blood of the city's patron saint, St. Januarius. After the blessing, Cardinal Crescentio Seppi of Naples announced that as a sign the saint loves the Pope, the blood in the vial had half liquefied. The thousands of people present in the cathedral applauded, but the Pope told them that it means the saint loves them halfway, that we must all convert a bit more so that he would love us more. The blood of the 4th century martyr is a Naples' most precious relic. The townspeople gauged the saint's pleasure with them by awaiting the blood's liquefaction three times a year during feast days. According to one of the custodians of the relic, the miracle had never occurred when a pope visited on a day other than the feast day. Another stop on the pope's whirlwind visit to, to Naples was at the New Jesus Basilica. Here, the pope visited with the sick and offered words of thanks to health care workers. Rome Reports has more from Naples. Pope Francis had an emotional meeting with a group of ill people in Naples' New Jesus Basilica. With about 800 people in attendance, the Pope said often it's difficult to approach an ill person because it reminds people of their own vulnerabilities. Perché andare a trovare un ammalato e andare a trovare la propria malattia, quella che noi andiamo, abbiamo dentro. He also added that one can only understand the mystery of disease through the crucified Christ. He thanked medical professionals for their work and reminded them that when medicine becomes a business, its true purpose is lost. Afterwards, the Pope greeted the sick. Many people attended the meeting, including some in stretchers. Looking now at news from around the country, the South Carolina Senate Committee on Medical Affairs heard testimony surrounding the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. The measure, which already passed the South Carolina House, would require that any physician should first determine the gestational age of the unborn child and then bar any abortion procedure if the determined age was older than 19 weeks. The current limit on abortion in South Carolina is 24 weeks. Wendy Duke testified at the hearing sharing her family's story of not aborting their daughter at 20 weeks despite doctor's recommendations. And the doctor said her daughter Savannah had a brain abnormality and one of her legs had no knee or foot. When she was born, Savannah battled cancer for the first 16 months of her life, got her first walker at two, crutches at three. She also swam in her first swim meet at six years old, ran a half mile in a country fun run, and in fifth grade, climbed to the top of a lighthouse at the age of 12. Savannah also gave a statement to the committee saying that she was glad her parents chose to save her life. A committee level vote is expected in the upcoming weeks. 11 other states have laws in place banning abortions after 20 weeks. Finally, in the news, well, believe it or not, Holy Week begins next week, and the Pope, as usual, has a very busy schedule. Rome Reports takes a look now at Pope Francis' Holy Week at the Vatican.
Holy Week begins on March 29th. It is the third time Pope Francis will preside over the celebrations in Rome. At 9.30 a.m. on Palm Sunday, Pope Francis will bless palms and olive branches in St. Peter's Square. He will then preside at Mass. As usual, the Pope will particularly target young people. On Holy Thursday at 9.30 a.m., he will chair the Chrism Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. That afternoon, the Pope will celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper in the Roman prison of Rebibia. There, he will wash the feet of several male and female prisoners. At 5 p.m. on Good Friday, the Pope will preside over services at St. Peter's Basilica. That night, at 9.15 p.m., he will participate in traditional Stations of the Cross at the Colosseum. At 8.30 p.m. on Holy Saturday, the Pope will celebrate the Easter Vigil at St. Peter's Basilica. He will preside over the Liturgy of the Word, the Baptismal Liturgy, and the Eucharistic Liturgy. The Easter Sunday Mass will begin at 10.15 a.m. in St. Peter's Square. To finish, Pope Francis will deliver the Urbi et Orbi Blessing. And that is all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kevin Elson. Don't forget you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.